In this video, I want to introduce three new measurement types in NX2406, the June 2024 release of NX. Uh, the first one is an interesting one for uh, cases like this, where you have a bunch of rollers <laughs> and you're looking for uh, an inscribed circle, for instance. Uh, not doesn't have to be rollers, but, but this is a, un, a common use case here. So if we've got, for instance, a set of rollers here, and we're looking for really the largest circle that will fill a particular space down in here, we can do that now with an inscribed circle measure. So to do this, we'll come in to the measure command. Uh, it's one of the extreme results. So if we look at the, the preferences here uh, and extreme, <laughs> you'll notice the new inscribed circle options here. Circumscribed has been there for a while. Inscribed here is new. And so uh, what we'll do is we're going to use an object set in this case here, right? An object set is going to collect up the things that we're using to, to do that. I'm going to turn on the extreme there so we can see these results when they come. And you'll notice that as we start to select things here, that it's going to start to try to compute that that uh, inscribed circle and it's already grabbed a first option there right for the thing that we've selected there happens to be one circle that fits really really well in that circle <laughs> right um, but anyway if we pick a second thing out there then it's going to try to compute one with those two and that is uh, is going to be a, a big one really that's going to sit on one side or the other right not a, a super useful case there yet but if we pick a third one here now, we start to see we've got a tritangent one here, right? That fits inside kind of those three, uh, those three uh, circles there, and that's starting to give us a, a meaningful result. And if we pick a fourth here, we can see that uh, we can we can fit the largest one in there among those. Now, this obviously is not touching this side, and that's okay, right? And this is the largest circle that'll fit with those four objects there. If we deselect this one here, for instance, now it'll jump over to those three that it can be tangent with, right? So we've got some uh, some smarts there, knows which one to find, knows it looks really finds, finds all of those uh, like that, and, and we'll choose the largest one. So that's that inscribed circle. And again, you can choose the radius or the diameter there as we do that, save these. Uh, create the arc center there if we want to, create that as an expression if we want to. So all of those options are available for inscribed circle. Okay, that's the first one. Second one here is uh, a new option for chain measurements. So if we come in and look here at uh, chain measurements, I'm going to start with an object here. And for instance, uh, if I'm stacking up a set of dimensions, maybe from the bottom up here, and finding the location of some of these rollers relative to the bottom, right? I might do this kind of a measurement here, where I say I'll start at the very, very bottom edge, uh, for instance, down here. And then from there, I might start picking centers of these rollers, right? So I may have that center and that center and that center, for instance. Now, uh, if I do that with a chain measurement, I can string those three together like that. Uh, but in this case, you'll notice those are distinctively not uh, kind of all go in the same direction, right? One is is really going from the back of the machine to the front here. So that one's almost a meter. And uh, it's really not what we're after. We're after kind of this vertical thing. So I'm going to snap it flat here, right? Um, that that kind of dimension is one we want. And then that one and then a third one that's up in here, right? And And those three... What we can do now here, you'll notice, is that there's a new option to use a vector as a reference when we're doing a chain measurement here. Okay, so what this is going to do is let us choose a vector, either here or with the vector tool. Of course, we can we can build one using one of these options if we want to. We can pick one off the screen, but this then is going to take those three those three measurements that we had there, one, two, and three, and and project those all into this direction, right? And so the, the net result of that now is that we've got uh, this measurement and this one. <laughs> That's fighting a little bit. There we go. And, and with those three now, you'll notice that what it's doing is projecting those all three into uh, along that vector, that selected vector, right? Um, so the, the front to back component of this one is ignored. Uh, and the front to back uh, diagonal nature of this top one here is ignored, right? And we get only those uh, vectors, really, really those dimensions, uh, measurements projected into that uh, that vertical axis. 
Okay, uh, so that's uh, again one that was somewhat highly requested this time around. <laughs> New option there to use a vector as a reference there when we're doing this this uh, kind of measurement. All right, third one. Uh, third one has to do with extreme points. And uh, the basic request was to start to allow points to participate in an extreme points measurement. <laughs> this was an interesting thing. The initial implementation of this really lets you select curves or, or surfaces or bodies and, uh, and would find extreme points relative to those, but did not take into account point objects that were in the model. It was just the original way this was specified with the customer and, and uh, that's how it came out. We've added the ability to include these now. So if we're going to do this uh, now, what we're going to do is start with, uh, let's do this one with an object set as well so we can kind of window select everything here. And uh, this is of course another extreme measure. Uh, I believe this one is, is on at the moment. So let's go look and sure enough, yep, extreme point is on, so that's good. So we have our, our, our object set. We can select all of these guys and, uh, and that gives us, gives us that set. And we have a hint in here telling us to define some directions for an extreme point measure, right? And so what we'll do is we'll start to add some vectors here. Now, the nature of extreme point is such that if there's only one object that's out in the most extreme direction, it'll find that one object, right? So if we pick this vector, it's going to find this point out here, out on the tip of this, which is the, the most, uh, which direction is that? In the negative z direction, the farthest thing out there in the negative z direction, right? Um, is the, the tip of that, that curve out there. So when we select this, you'll see that it'll give us that result, right? That's that, that direction. If we come the other direction here, if instead of that vector, we choose the positive x direction, you'll notice that the surface ends out here, right? And we've got more than one point possible along that curve out there. So if we select this vector instead, right, we're reselecting here, this vector two, it's gonna preview a bunch of points along here and it'll tell us there are multiple points there and will ask us to specify an additional director of action direct, <laughs> direction vector to uh, to reduce the solution set there right and so what we can do is pick a vector that's either or front or back here positive or negative y and that'll resolve to one end or the other of this curve here okay so we'll pick a, a second vector we will process these in order right we've got our, our set of objects this gets us, vector two gets us to this end, and then and then after that it'll process the next vector here, which will pick us the back point there, right? So in this case, those two vectors were needed to, to resolve that. Um, similarly, uh, if we, let's do this, uh, let's take that guy out, and uh, let's have our this vector be down instead, right? And this kind of time, we have a big planar bottom on this uh, on this block down here that uh, all of which, all of those points, are equal, equally along the negative z-axis down there. So here again, we can add a vector, for instance, to, to maybe aim for this end of the block down here, and that'll get us multiple points along that uh, direction. And then we'll pick one, we want it to aim for this front corner here. So we can add a third vector, in this case, to go and grab that front corner there, and that'll find us, again, resolve to an extreme point uh, that we're after. Okay, so that's how extreme point works. Um, let's let's come back here and delete a couple of these guys. And uh, the order actually doesn't matter here. We'll pick uh, instead a vector that goes up. Okay, <laughs> so this is going up in positive z. Now this is where, in the past, this would have given us this point right here at the top of the curve, right? <laughs> because we weren't yet uh, using the points up above. But when we pick this now, it's going to go and find the, the uppermost point. Uh, if we snap this over here in Z, we can see that sure enough, that's the, 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 the point that's farthest along in the positive Z direction up there. These are going to participate in that measurement now, which is new in this release. So uh, again, little overview there of extreme measure and how that works. Pick a set of objects and then, and then pick some vectors to, to figure out which direction you're going. And, uh, and, and we'll end up here with a, with a point at the end of the day that we can save either as an expression, we can uh, save that uh, as, as a, a geometry. We can save it as non-associative geometry if it's all by itself. If we save it as an expression, we'll create the associative measurement, then this will become associative geometry as well, of course. Okay. So uh, with all of that, I hope you find that useful. <laughs>